Hey fam, what's up? It's your girl, Lily, back with a brand new adventure. And this time we're going full on Viking. We're talking longboats, epic battles, and stories that'll make you sleep with the lights on. Just kidding, kinda. So buckle up because we're diving headfirst into the wild, wild world of Scandinavian history. And trust me, these stories are anything but boring history lessons. We're talking about the kind of stuff that makes Game of Thrones look like a children's bedtime story. Get ready to meet some seriously intense characters raging berserker warriors, undead Draugr with a bone to pick, pun intended, and a cursed sword that's more dramatic than a real housewife's reunion. So grab your helmets, your axes, and maybe a nightlight or two, because things are about to get seriously viking up in here. Let's go! First up on our Viking hit list, the Berserkers. Now, if you think regular Vikings were hardcore, wait till you hear about these guys. Imagine the most intense workout you've ever done. Multiply that by a thousand. Add a dash of ancient Nordic magic and you might, just might, be approaching Berserker level. These warriors were basically the Viking equivalent of a human wrecking ball. We're talking about dudes so fierce, so full of rage, they made Conor McGregor look like a kitten in a teacup. They'd charge into battle in a trance-like fury, foaming at the mouth, rocking nothing but animal skins, and laughing off wounds that would make a normal person cry for their mummy. Seriously, they were said to be immune to pain. Historians are still scratching their heads over what exactly turned these guys into superhuman fighting machines. Some say they used hallucinogenic plants, Others think it was all about crazy rituals and mind games. Whatever their secret was, it definitely worked. Now you might be thinking, Berserkers sound pretty awesome. Who wouldn't want a squad of invincible warriors on their side? And yeah, in the heat of battle, they were basically cheat codes. But imagine having these guys around 24-7. You'd need to keep them constantly supplied with enemies to fight Otherwise, they might just turn on you. And let's be real, you do not want to be on a berserker's bad side. They were so unpredictable and dangerous, even Vikings were like, okay, we need to chill these dudes out. I'm talking actual laws were put in place to forbid going berserk. That's how wild things got. It's like your grandma telling you to calm down at a family dinner. You know you've gone too far when your grandma's involved. So, what fueled this legendary berserker rage? Was it magic mushrooms? Ancient Viking CrossFit? Well, historians have a few theories. One idea is that berserkers might have used a little something called henbane, a plant known for its hallucinogenic effects. We're talking serious mind-bending stuff, folks. Imagine tripping so hard you think you're a bear and everyone around you is a delicious salmon. That's henbane for you. Another theory suggests that berserkers practiced a form of self-hypnosis or meditation, pushing themselves into a state of extreme focus and aggression. Think of it like that friend who gets way too into a game of Monopoly. Now multiply that intensity by a thousand, give them an axe, and boom, you've got yourself a berserker. Whether fueled by plants or pure adrenaline, the berserkers left their mark on history. Their legend continues to fascinate us popping up in movies, video games, and even heavy metal music. I mean, who doesn't love a good story about warriors who could literally scare the pants off their enemies? And let's be real, the image of a dude in a bearskin, frothing at the mouth, charging into battle is pretty metal. But beyond the Hollywood hype, the berserkers remind us of the raw power that lies within us all, that primal energy that drive to fight, to conquer, to unleash our inner beast. Of course, I'm not saying you should go full-on berserker in your next yoga class, but maybe, just maybe, we can all learn a thing or two from their unwavering intensity and commitment. Just, you know, maybe leave the axe at home. Okay, so we've tackled the berserkers, those muscle-bound party animals of the Viking world. Now, let's dive into something a little spookier, shall we? Get ready for the Draugr, the undead Viking warriors who put the fear in fierce. These guys are not your friendly neighborhood ghosts. We're talking vengeful spirits trapped
trapped between worlds with a serious grudge against the living. Think of them like that ex who just can't take the hint. It's over, dude. But unlike your average ghost, who might just rattle some chains or moan a little, the Draugr are all about action. We're talking superhuman strength, the ability to shapeshift, and a nasty habit of popping up where you least expect them. So if you ever find yourself wandering through an ancient Scandinavian burial ground, be warned. You might just run into one of these grumpy ghosts. And trust me, you don't want to be on their bad side. Now you might be thinking, Ghosts! Big whoop! I've seen Ghostbusters, I can handle it. But hold on a second, my friend. These ain't your Casper the friendly ghost types. The Draugr are a whole different breed of spooky. They're not just wispy figures who float through walls and moan. We're talking about reanimated corpses, still packing their Viking muscles and bad attitudes. And they are not afraid to use them. Imagine a zombie with a six-pack, a bad case of bedhead, and the strength of ten men. That's a Draugr, fam. They could crush bones, toss boulders like they were pebbles, and even swim through solid rock. They were the ultimate Viking nightmare, undead, unstoppable, and really, really pissed off. To give you a taste of just how terrifying these Draugr could be, let me tell you about Glam. This wasn't some low-level, bottom-feeding ghost. Glam was the LeBron James of Draugr, the Beyonce, if you will, the ultimate undead superstar. This guy wasn't content with just haunting a graveyard. Glam went full-on eco-terrorist, unleashing his fury on an entire region. We're talking blizzards, crop failures, and enough bad vibes to make a teenager's bedroom look cheerful. For years, Glam terrorized the locals, and nobody could stop him. People were terrified to leave their homes, convinced that even death offered no escape from this vengeful spirit. It's like that one mosquito that keeps buzzing around your head, except instead of a mosquito, it's a giant undead Viking warrior, and instead of buzzing, it's causing natural disasters. But Glam's reign of terror couldn't last forever. Enter Greta the Strong, a legendary Viking hero who was basically the Chuck Norris of his time. Gretia was like, OK, Glam, enough is enough. It's time to put you back in the ground for good. So Gretia tracked Glam down to his lair, and they had an epic showdown. We're talking hand-to-hand -hand combat, ancient curses flying, and enough testosterone to fuel a thousand gym memberships. It was a battle for the ages, a clash between the living and the undead, with the fate of the entire region hanging in the balance. And guess what? Gretir won. He defeated Glam, proving that even the most terrifying Draugr was no match for a true Viking hero. Of course, not everyone could be a Gretir. For most Vikings, the fear of becoming a Draugr was very real. Okay, folks, buckle up for our final spooky story. This one is a real blood jerker. We're talking about Tyrfing, a legendary Viking sword shrouded in drama and tragedy. Dwarves were forced to forge this sword and they held a grudge. The king kidnapped them, demanding a magical sword, so they crafted Tyrfing with a curse. It could cut through iron like butter, but it brought tragedy and bloodshed to its wielder. Now, You'd think a sword that comes with a warning label like caution may cause extreme misfortune and untimely death wouldn't exactly be a hot commodity. But this was a time when people apparently didn't read the fine print because turfing was passed down from one unlucky owner to the next. Each person who got their hands on this cursed blade was basically signing up for a one-way ticket to Disaster City. Kings, warriors, even your average Joe who probably just wanted to show off at the village feast. They all met their doom thanks to Turfing's insatiable thirst for blood. It was like the sword had its own dark energy, driving its wielder to commit terrible deeds. Kind of like when you binge watch a show and eat an entire pizza by yourself, even though you know you'll regret it later. One poor guy, King Svafalami of Gardariki, he was the first victim of Tyrfing's curse. 
He got a little too greedy and ended up getting ambushed by, wait for it, the very same dwarves who made the sword. Talk about awkward. They were like, remember us? We told you this was a bad idea. Svafalami was killed by his own sword, which, if you ask me, is a pretty ironic way to go. Then there was this other dude, Angantir. He inherited Tyrfing, and you'd think he'd have learned from Svafalami's mistake. But nope, he went full-on battle mode, using turfing to win epic battles, but also racking up a serious body count. Of course, his luck eventually ran out, and he ended up six feet under, proving that even the coolest sword can't save you from a bad case of karma. So, after centuries of bloodshed and misfortune, people were starting to catch on that maybe, just maybe, this whole turfing thing was a bad idea, Imagine the whispers, the side-eyes when someone pulled out that sword at a dinner party. People were probably like, oh great, here we go again. Finally, a Viking king named Herva, who must have been a big fan of happy endings, decided enough was enough. This guy was like the Marie Kondo of cursed swords, except instead of sparking joy, he was all about stopping the drama. Herva was like, we need to get rid of this toxic energy in our lives. So Herva, being a brave and slightly crazy soul, decided to do what any sensible person would do. He went on a quest to find and bury Turfing, because nothing says problem solved like burying a cursed sword in the middle of nowhere, right? This wasn't just any old treasure hunt, though. Herva had to channel his inner Indiana Jones, battling through treacherous landscapes facing down mythical creatures and probably dealing with some really bad travel delays because, let's be real, even Viking voyages had their downsides. And guess what? Herver actually pulled it off. He found Tyrfing, buried deep inside a burial mound, probably guarded by some creepy statues and maybe a riddle or two. He bravely faced his fears, outsmarted the traps and finally laid Tyrfing to rest hopefully for good this time. It was like the sword version of a therapy breakthrough. Everyone could finally breathe a sigh of relief. But even though Turfing was buried, the legend of the cursed sword lived on, reminding people that even the most beautiful and powerful things can come with a hefty price tag. It's a classic tale of greed, revenge, and the dangers of not reading the fine print before accepting magical gifts. Seriously, folks, always read the terms and conditions. So the next time you're feeling tempted by something shiny and new, just remember Turfing, the cursed sword that brought nothing but trouble. Sometimes the best things in life are the ones that don't come with a side of eternal doom. Well, my fellow history buffs and lovers of all things spooky, We've reached the end of our journey through some of the most chilling tales from Scandinavian history. We've explored the ferocious rage of the berserkers, shivered at the thought of the vengeful Draugr, and learned a valuable lesson about the dangers of cursed swords thanks to turfing. If these eerie tales have left you wanting more, well, you know what to do. Hit that subscribe button and join me on this wild ride called Lily's Viking Adventure for more strange, spooky, and downright fascinating stories from the land of the Vikings. And while you're at it, give this video a big thumbs up. It really helps out the channel, and let's be honest, you know you want to see more videos like this. Don't forget to let me know in the comments which story creeped you out the most. Was it the Berserker's uncontrollable rage? The Draugr's thirst for revenge? or Turfing's bloodthirsty legacy. I'm dying to know. And for all you history nerds out there, you know I got you covered. Check out the video description for all the sources and links I use to bring you these amazing stories. Oh, and before you go, I've got a little something special for you. Head on over to my Etsy shop, where you can find unique Viking-inspired creations that'll let you show off your love for Norse mythology and history. From Viking-themed phone protection to educational posters and coffee mugs, there's something for everyone. The link is in the description, so go ahead, treat yourself. You deserve it. Until next time, my friends, 
Stay curious, stay spooky, and keep exploring the world's most fascinating stories. Skull!